the same we, we, waters we, that our people just died in three days ago are the same waters the very next day these visitors, uh, tourists, were swimming in. And it, that says a lot about where their heart and mind is through all of this and where our heart and mind is. Though. You don't see our people swimming, snorkeling, surfing. Nobody is having fun in tragedy and continuing their lives like nothing has happened. There is two Hawaii's right now. There is the Hawaii we're living in and the Hawaii they're living in, they're visiting in. Yes, if by now you don't see what is going on, then I don't know when that will be. I recently came across this fire expert one Maui fire victims may never be identified because he destroyed their DNA as FBI collected just 104 samples from relatives of 1,100 missing and first tourist victim is identified. On this same clip, we are going to take an exclusive look into the lease FBI is to release containing the names of all the 1,000 missing persons. If you are not subscribed to this channel, please endeavor to do that. And if possible, why not share this video? Take a look at this, and you're going to want to send this around to everybody. It's revealed today by the Associated Press, and I give them credit. Usually they do not do a good job, but they did on this one. The Associated Press reporting that police, Maui police, barricaded key exits from Lahana, from the neighborhood where the fires were burning, they barricaded the roads, keeping people from escaping, basically driving people back to the flames. People died in their vehicles, burned to death in their cars during the fires because roads were blocked. Why were roads blocked? Well, the fire department officials Officials in Maui are saying it's because there were power lines down and they were worried that cars driving across them, you know, they could be electrocuted. But the alternative is that people burn to death in their cars. So I want to know what you think about this. Weeks ago, this would have been a conspiracy theory, and it was. Now, it's true. Let me know what you think in the comments below. You need to follow me on TikTok. I quit my job in the mainstream media. Now I'm all about giving you the real information. Hit the plus symbol right over there, my friends. Yes, this is how they change the story. I don't know. If you saw this video, just take a look at these. What made the fires in Hawaii so exceptionally bad? The three main factors were strong winds, dry vegetation, and low humidity. <coughs> climate change. Normally this is the dry season in Hawaii, but the trade winds have been unusually low. Wind happens because of differences in pressure. These trade winds are caused by high pressure systems in the northern Pacific and low pressure systems near the equator. So these Pacific winds travel south. When they get there, the low pressure causes that hot air to rise, where it cools down and forms clouds. This keeps life on the island cool and dry. But over the years, these trade winds have been decreasing, contributing to more and more droughts. They're called trade winds, by the way, because back in the day, ships depended on strong, reliable winds, and they helped with the trade routes. The second factor was Hurricane Dora. Most people associate hurricanes with the East Coast, but hurricanes happen in the Pacific Ocean too, just not as often. Hurricane Dora won't directly hit Hawaii. It's actually a few hundred miles south, but its winds are literally fanning the flames. So the difference between the high pressure systems in the Northern Pacific and a hurricane in the South, and Hawaii is caught right in the middle. The exact cause for the fire? isn't yet known, but 85% of wildfires are started by people, so... The good news is as of this morning, about 80% of the fire is contained. So let me read this article so you can understand exactly what is going on. Many of those killed in Maui wildfire may never be properly identified because the devastating heat has made it so difficult to obtain DNA from remains officials have won. Now, going down this article, the grim tag has also been made harder because so few relatives of the missing have provided DNA samples to compare with the victim, leading to authority to plead for more people to come forward. People are scared to actually give their DNA because sometimes it can be very disturbing. You don't know the outcome, what they might use that to do. Officials said that they have been unable to obtain a usable DNA sample from 25% of the remains of 
25% of the remains found so far, fire expert says it is possible some bodies were cremated by the intense heat, potentially leaving no bones left to identify through sampling. Some 1,000 to 1,100 names remain on the FBI tentative unconfirmed list of people unaccounted for after Wi-Fi destroyed the historic seaside community of Lahina on Maui, the update came as the first terrorist victim of the fire was formally identified. Teresa Cook, 72, was staying at a hotel in Lahina and due to fly home on August 9, the day after the fire broke out, her name was revealed along with seven others on Tuesday. Cook's daughter, Melissa Cook, had initially posted and appealed to Facebook last Thursday and said she provided DNA to authorities. She later shared the heartbreaking update that her mother, who is from California, had perished. Despite the huge number of people unaccounted for Jolie French, who is helping lead effort to identify remains by DNA analysts, said the Island Family Assistance Center so far has collected DNA from just 104 families. Ask yourself this question, why are people reluctant to give their DNA? Some are actually scared, you know, to even do this. Reasons, I can't say, I want you to know your thought by taking through this on the comment sections because sometimes I do learn from these. He reassured people that DNA will only be used for identification purposes and wouldn't be heard by authorities. People would not be asked about the immigration status or citizenship. Martin said, confirming whether those who are unaccounted for human remains so that we can recover our loved ones. I've said it before. I'm not going to stop saying it. We are going to do this right. We're not going to do it fast. We cannot be in a rush to judgment. Once the search is done, I can't guarantee, nor can anyone say that we got everybody. We're going to do our darndest to get it right. And we'd like to welcome back now Dr. Robert Mann, one of the leading forensic anthropologists in the field. He's an adjunct professor of anatomy and pathology at the John A. Burns School of Medicine at the University of Hawaii. Dr. Mann, thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning. So you are helping to identify the victims who have been recovered from this disaster area. And when we first spoke last week, you said you're trying to help families find resolution. So how is that process going? Well, I think it's I think it's moving along about as well as anyone could could expect. Um, the teams are still out doing the search and recovery. We have very large teams that are still working to examine and identify uh, the individuals that are unaccounted for. So from it, you realize some people are actually scared to give in their DNA because of their immigration statute, which is something initially I knew that is why. People are skeptical with this kind of information. Thank you guys. Endeavor to share this video. Show state officials and survivors what it's going to take to recover. Stands closely with commercial airlines to get folks. Well, aren't we Americans too? Like